Hello everybody, it's been quite a while since I last posted a video, I think years really. Um, and this video is really just coming because I had a lot of frustration trying to get something that I think should be pretty simple going, which is um, getting a Bluetooth Central to run on a Jetson Tegra board. And this probably goes for anything, so really a Raspberry Pi or any other Linux device that you might be using where you're going to use the Blue Z. Um, Bluetooth module stuff for Linux and so a lot of the difficulty I had was that uh, there's not a whole lot of articles out there that show how to actually do this how to accomplish this how to turn your Linux machine into a Bluetooth peripheral I think I said central earlier but a uh, peripheral uh, where it's going to broadcast uh, some of the GAT services and characteristics and allow you to, to write and read them and stuff like that and so um, what I did find though is a couple little pieces of articles on there where it seems like a lot of the HCI tools and HCI um, uh, command line utilities have been deprecated in use of something called um, Bluetooth control so like for example Bluetooth control command you can run it uh, it registers um, does all that kind of stuff and so right here I'm actually SSH'd in two times into uh, my Jetson board. I've got on the left uh, one SSH session where I'm going to be running Bluetooth. On the right, this is how I kind of discovered how to get things further along and, and working is to actually look at the output of uh, System D um, process the service for Bluetooth. So if you actually type System D or System Control status Bluetooth, you can see there it is. There's the um, Bluetooth service running in the background. Uh, the daemon is Bluetooth. Uh, D for the daemon and then here is actually some information that happens whenever you try to access and do anything so this is what really helped me try to figure out uh, what was going on here so if I actually quit there um, what I want to do is I want to see those system messages always so I'm going to do a journal control uh, I'm going to say my um, my service that I'm looking at is Bluetooth um, and I want to just tail the end of it and just continuously watch it so if I do that there anything that happens um, will show up on the right hand side of the screen so uh, for example if I exit out you can see my agent here disconnects and um, we're gonna try to go ahead and connect to it again um, so the first thing I did is I'm running 5.48 of Bluetooth uh, D uh, as well as the Bluetooth um, uh, control program is if I type version um, you can see it's version 5.48 and this is where I found kind of the first bug that's in the Blue Z stuff um, uh, even though I, I show kind of my path was was in here that's because I had actually compile stuff which we'll get to in just a minute um, so from here you kind of have a nice little menu control you can type help you can see menu stuff uh, there's not a whole lot on the internet about what this stuff does and how to actually do it so um, there's a lot of I guess I take it back there's a number of articles on how to be a central where you're going to talk to a peripheral device like say you want to talk with your Raspberry Pi to like a Bluetooth speaker and stuff like that you can do scan and then show device and all that kind of stuff but in this case we actually want to advertise and um, become a Bluetooth peripheral with um, with our boards here so if I type um, menu I can actually go into some of these submenus and you can see up here we got advertise we've got scan GAT list control um, and I'm just gonna go into the the GAT menu and now I've I'm presented with more options in here and so what I can do is I can actually go through the process of creating a service I'm not gonna go through all the details of Bluetooth low energy but creating a service creating a characteristic and then registering that whole thing as an application so uh, what you do is you'd say register um, service uh, zero x I'm just gonna call it like, give it a 16-bit UUID um, I'm just gonna call it FFFF um, it's gonna then ask you know do you want this to be a primary service just say yes and so now we have a service it's not actually sent off yet to the back and you can see nothing over here on the Bluetooth uh, daemon has actually received anything because you have to complete further steps so we created a service object right here um, this is kind of a, a path that is going to be used internally for that service um, 
and again, I had to dig into the source code to figure out what this stuff means, so I'll just share it with you right now. Um, it's kind of like the, the path that you can use when they say like attributes up here and stuff. That's that's typically the path they're talking about right there. Here's the UUID. Again, we're doing a 16-bit, so we only have four hexadecimal codes. And you specify them with, you know, 0x hexadecimal. You could actually type in a numeric number. It does a string to long uh, in C code, and, and that's how it parses that. Um, and then this unknown, there's no documentation what that unknown means. What it really means is that there's some UUIDs that are actually out there that are registered with the Bluetooth SIG group, as like heart rate monitor and battery service and all that stuff. So if you actually had chosen a UUID that matched one of those, it would have actually printed out here like heart rate and stuff. So um, again, that took digging into code to figure out what that actually did. So now I have a service registered. Uh, um, well, I'm in the process of registering it, and I'm going to go ahead and, and create a characteristic. So register characteristic, um, and again, you got to give it a, a UUID. In this case, I'm going to do a short 16-bit code. I'm just going to call it like BBBB. And the, the next thing you have to do is you have to give parameter flags of it. So I'm going to say read. Um, and uh, that's it. So I'll just this will be a readable parameter that uh, my iPhone. That's what I'm really trying to do here is using one of the programs in the iPhone to read this parameter. Um, I show that here. And again, same thing. If I would have used a UUID, it would have shown um, there what it what it the common value is. But now it's asking me what value do I want to default this thing to, and I'm just going to put you know the value one in there. So if I read this with my Bluetooth device with my iPhone. I'll see that characteristic has a value of one. So now it's I got it all good. I got a service. I got a characteristic, and I'm going to do a register application. I'm not going to put a UUID up here. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, didn't seem like it actually did anything when I dig and in, dug into the code. And I hit register. Oh well, it failed to register. Well, why is that? Let's look over here in the Bluetooth, and it says invalid characteristic flag zero x b b b. Well, that's interesting. Um, what that is telling, and again, this took many hours of digging through the code and stuff like that, is what it's looking for is it's looking for a characteristic flag such as read or write or notify and, and everything. And so what I basically determined the issue was is that this program, this Bluetooth control program, has a bug in it where it's sending invalid parameters over to the, um, the Bluetooth uh, daemon over here and so I decided well I'm gonna have to download and recompile the Bluetooth stuff and see if there's a newer version that fixes this and so I'm just gonna uh, exit out of this thing and so you can see here I actually downloaded the Bluetooth Z 5.49 and I compiled it configured you know dot slash configure and did all that kind of stuff and, and make it I didn't actually install it I found that I could actually just use the new um, Bluetooth control program that is provided in the client folder. So once you type make and it builds successfully because you had all the dependencies installed and all that, you can now actually install it and um, make it. And so I actually have it run here. So I'm just going to run it with dot slash. So I want to run out of this this folder that I'm in instead of the one that's installed globally and just run here. Uh, if I type help, so you can see the agent connected um, and stuff. If I type help, uh, I can see a little bit of a different menu, um, but it's it's pretty much mostly the same. Again, I'm just going to quickly now go through all these steps where I go into the GAT menu, and I'm going to go ahead and do a register service, 0x, f, 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 and it's primary, yes, register, characteristic, 0x, b, 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 it's a read, characteristic there value of one now I'm going to register application hey it actually worked this time we actually got um, it's listing out all of the different characteristics that this Bluetooth device is publishing and these are um, some of the common ones that actually describe the device the advertisements um, so they're always there this one is also always there um, but here's my 16-bit one that I got and it printed the whole thing out twice once once I think when it was registering it and then once it successfully registered it it prints it out twice here um, and so over here everything actually looks happy um, 
and the daemon. And so what you do to get out of this menu is you type back and you, you go to this menu um, and what you can do is you can type show uh, you can see it's discoverable, it's parable, all that kind of stuff. What I wanted to do is I didn't want this to be parable. I just wanted to have um, my iPhone just kind of discover it, be able to read services, but not necessarily pair to it every single time. So I'm going to set parable off. Um, and then you can see obviously it took effect over in the daemon. Um, and then I'm going to say advertise on. So by default it's seems like it doesn't advertise so I'm just gonna say advertise on um, it, it, even though it says name over here is off uh, it actually really did take the name that I had up in uh, the device when it's um, on there and stuff and it's actually advertising now I know I don't have a webcam where I can show my iPhone but if I pull it up right now I can see in a, a really great program called light blue so um, light blue um, I can see the uh, Josh-Tegra device and um, I can see the power of it and step into it to the services. Uh, one quick note though is um, uh, by default it seems like it doesn't advertise the services so you might have to go into advertise, uh, menu advertise and then say service um, that you want to advertise and I believe I do uh, service that um, and then uh, if I step into it now, it looks like I might step into it. And I, I just remember, yep, now, now it actually allowed me to do that. I've got my iPhone connected. Um, it's reading all the characteristics. You'll see this kind of spit out stuff as the iPhone's kind of reading, interrogating it with that, that light blue. But um, really frustrating that it took this long to actually do something as simple as this. Um, one quick note is if you do exit this, basically you just kind of have removed your agent from the Bluetooth daemon and it's gone like that characteristic is gone and everything like that um, and the iPhone right now shows that I've been disconnected from the peripheral and all that kind of stuff my next step I'm gonna to try to do is to actually do some C programming to make this uh, stay so I can have a program running and instead of always doing it through that but I figured I wanted to kinda of share out there um, because I've I was just really frustrated not finding a way to do Bluetooth um, peripheral on uh, an embedded Linux computer and stuff. So hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, leave any comments and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.